Welcome to Roadmap to Residency. Hello everyone, I am Aviraj. Welcome to Harvard Club 250 Match Maker Sessions. We will be running through some questions with you guys to help you on a journey to a 250. Now this video is all about seizures and epilepsy part 1. So in seizure and epilepsy part, they don't generally uh, ask you about the anatomy and pathogenesis. What they do test you on is the pharmacology part of the seizures and epilepsy. But to understand the pharmacology part, you need to have a clear understanding about the different types of seizures and how it originates or what are the different symptoms of the seizures. And we will discuss the specific uh, pharmacology part in the second part, seizures and epilepsy video. So here we have a question with us. Which of the following agents is the best long-term treatment for this patient? An 11-year-old boy is brought to the emergency department by ambulance after he briefly lost consciousness. The patient's mother found him on the kitchen floor, shaking and jerking. She believes that he was out of her sight for only a few minutes. When asked about any other abnormal behaviors, she says that her son often stares into the space and does not respond to questions during these episodes. The patient has no known medical conditions or history of recent illnesses. He is afebrile with normal vital signs. The patient seems sleepy but is oriented to time place and has no abnormality, abnormalities on physical examination. Several hours later, he is alert and says that he wants to go home. Which of the following agents is the best long-term treatment in this patient? Now, we can see that the patient is having uh, have a features of just a brief loss of consciousness okay, in the, in the past and uh, just a blank stare which seems that the patient was already having absent seizures. Okay, which the mother did not notice, and now the patient is having the, gen the generalized tonic clonic seizures. So, and the question is not asking about the acute treatment, but rather is asking us about the long term treatment in this patient. So, we have the options like carbamazepine, isosuximide, gabapentin, phenytoin, or valproic acid. So, let's summarize the different types of seizure and the medication that we generally use in these types. So, we have the, the generalized seizure or the focal onset seizure. In generalized seizure, we have first the tonic clonic seizure, in which there is loss of consciousness and poor signal state, and there is diffuse contraction, which is called as the tonic phase, and there is jerking, which is called as the clonic phase. Then there is the myoclonic phase or the myoclonic seizures. Which, in which there is no loss of consciousness and no postictal stage. So myoclonic means only a specific group of muscles or only the uh, muscles of one half or, or, or the whole body, only muscles is involved. Okay. Now there is only brief jerking movements. In atonic uh, type of seizures, there is sudden loss of, con of the muscle tone. Okay. When there is sudden loss of muscle tone, you just fall on the floor. Now in tonic-clonic, myoclonic and atonic seizures, the medication is broad spectrum levetiracetam or valproic acid. In case of absent seizure, there is brief staring episodes, automatism may be present, and there may be no post-ictal stage. Okay. Now, this statement that there is no post-ictal state is one of the characteristic features of the absent seizures. And we use ethosuximide, which is only used for the absence. And if the patient is having tonic clonic uh, with absent seizures, okay. Uh, and we need to administer the drugs for a long-term treatment of the tonic clonic also, then we need to add on another drug. But if you only want to use uh, the drug for the absent seizure, then ethosuximide is the drug of choice. Now, focal onset seizure or single uh, hemisphere seizures, uh, it is a two types, focal onset with in intact awareness and focal awareness with focal onset with impaired awareness. Now, focal onset seizures with uh, intact awareness is when the patient is aware during the event of the seizure and there is no post state. Okay, and impaired awareness is when the person is uh, appears awake, but is con but his consciousness is actually altered. Okay, and there is post state which is present in, in case of focal onset seizures with impaired awareness. Now we have to administer narrow spectrum drugs like phenytoin, carbamazepine, or gabapentin in these sort of cases. So these patients with high frequency uh, st staring spells, uh, with, with frequent staring spells and an unprovoked tonic clonic seizure, most likely has undiagnosed juvenile absence epilepsy. Absence seizures are characterized by a momentary uh, lapses in consciousness and associated with a classic three hours spike wave pattern on electroencephalogram. Younger children with absence seizures typically do not develop other seizure types. However, late onset of absence epilepsy associated with an increased incidence of generalized onset tonic clonic or myoclonic seizures. Although a first time unprovoked seizure may not require treatment, this patient has had multiple seizures, including both absence and tonic clonic seizures. Ethosuximide is the preferred first-line agent for the treatment of isolated absence seizures. However, it does not suppress the tonic-clonic seizures. 
Treatment with a broad spectrum antiplatelet such as valproic acid is required in these patients because it is effective for both absence and tonic clonic seizures. So, like as I, I told you, if the patient is having, if we only have to treat the absence seizures, then we need to uh, give the patient ethosuximide. But since the patient is also having uh, generalized tonic clonic seizures, now we have to start the patient on valproic acid. And valproic acid, since it is a, a long acting, okay, long spectrum, uh, then it works on both the absence as well as tonic clonic seizures. Mm -hmm. Now, some uh, uh, briefing about the focal and generalized seizures part of the first aid. Now, seizures are characterized by the synchronized high-frequency neuronal fighting. And there are a variety of forms, focal seizures and generalized seizures. So, we have already discussed this, but again, we don't want to leave the first aid. But focal seizures have focal aware and focal impaired awareness, okay? And focal seizures is when they, we uh, have effect only on the single area of the brain, either on a single lobe or any one part of the one lobe. It is most commonly originated in the medial temporal lobe. Now, this information is very, very important because sometimes they just show you the MRI scan and then they ask what may be the seizure type in this patient. Okay. And generally, the MRI is showing the lesion in the medial temporal lobe and the patient is having a uh, uh, focal seizure which is affected to the function of that medial temporal lobe. The focal aware uh, is when the consciousness is intact and focal impaired awareness is when there is impaired consciousness. And... In generalized seizures, uh, it is a, it is a diffuse sort of seizure, and there are different types like absence, clonic, tonic, clonic, tonic, or atonic. So absence is when there is three hours of spike and wave discharges, and frequent episodes of blank stare, and there is no posterior confusion. So episodes of blank stare plus no posterior con confusion should be present uh, to diagnose the absence seizure. Uh, it can be triggered by hyperventilation. Myoclonic seizures are quick repetitive jogs and there is no loss of consciousness. Tonic clonic seizures alternating stiffening and movement, postural confusion and urinary incontinence and tongue biting. Tonic stiffening, atonic drop seizures, falls to the floor, commonly mistaken for fainting. Now, again, seizure, focal, and generalized focal can again go to secondary generalized. If there is impaired consciousness, it is focal seizure with impaired awareness. If not, it is focal aware seizure. Generalized seizures, tonic, atonic, myoclonic, atonic, uh, tonic, clonic, to tonic, myoclonic, atonic, and absence. Okay. Now, these are the typical seizure types. What I want to highlight is the absence seizure where we have blank stare and there is no postural confusion. So generally, the teacher complains to the parents that the patient having a blank stare and is not res responsive at that moment of the time. Uh, the parents, they do not generally notice these sort of seizures. So there are different causes of seizures. So now, number one cause is the metabolic and electrolyte disturbances. So if the patient is having hyponatremia, water intoxication, hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia, hypocalcemia, uremia, thyroid storm or hyperthermia, then the patient may experience seizure. If the patient has any brain, brain metastasis or primary brain tumors or hemorrhage, then the patient can suffer from seizure uh, episodes. If the patient is non-compliance with anticonvulsants, such as the patient is already a diagnosed epileptic patient and he is uh, um, given some anticonvulsant and he is not compliant with those, then this is the most common reason for poor seizure control in epilepsy. Now, acute withdrawal from alcohol, benzodiazepines, and barbiturates can also precipitate seizures. And there are some miscellaneous uh, causes like pseudo seizures, which are not true seizures but are psychiatric in origin. And they are very difficult to diagnose without an EEG. Uh, eclampsia is when a pre eclamptic woman has gone on to, on to seizures, then it is called as uh, eclampsia. Hypertensive encephalopathy is when there is severe hypertension, which can cause cerebral edema, and this cerebral edema can cause uh, pressure lesions and it can precipitate to seizures. Intoxications like cocaine, lithium, lidocaine, okay, lithium can cause both the GIT and CNS symptoms, then this intoxication can cause seizures. So septic shock, bacterial or viral meningitis, brain abscesses, okay, uh, ischemia, stroke TIA can cause seizures and increased ICP, for example, due to trauma can cause seizures. So epileptic seizures, uh, if the seizures are partial or generalized, we have to look for that. If the seizures are partial, if the, if the consciousness is impaired, yes, then it is called as complex partial seizures. And if the consciousness is not impaired, it is called as the simple partial seizures. And in both types, we give the phenytoin and caramazepine, which are the drug of choice. So are the seizures, the seizures generalized? Uh, then we have to look for are they convulsive or not. If they are convulsive, then we diagnose it as tonic clonic or myoclonic seizures. And the, uh, the drug of choice is again for phenytoin and caramazepine. But if there are absent seizures only, then we go for ethosoxamide and valproic acid, like in this patient.
Now, this is a generalized uh, uh, etiology and pathophysiology and the clinical features of the generalized seizures. So, if the patient is having any vascular disturbances like atrial venous uh, malformation, uh, aneurysm, posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome or eclampsia, intracanal hemorrhage, hyperal hypoglycemia, uh, hyponatremia, hypocalcemia, which can lead to uh, metabolic disturbances if, if the patient is have, having some mass lesion, if there is any history of CNS infection like meningitis, encephalitis, HIV, or if the patient is uh, under the influence of alcohol and is knowing under alcohol withdrawal, if the patient has a history of a stroke, cardiac arrest, which can cause hypoxia of the brain tissue, if the patient has drug toxicity like cocaine and lidocaine, and if there is any trauma. Now, this all can lead to imbalance between the excitatory and inhibitory stimuli resulting in aberrant electrical discharge. A spontaneous synchronous depolarization of both cerebral hemisphere can cause generalized seizures. Now, these generalized seizures may be of atonic type, tonic type, clonic, tonic, clonic, myoclonic, or brief. Now, in all of these, except absent seizure, there is post-ictal confusion. Okay, in absent seizure, there is no post ictal confusion. This is the one thing that I want to highlight again. Now, these all seizures, okay, can precipitate to status epilepticus, can cause physical injury, and the patient may go, uh, uh, may experience sudden death, okay, if the patient is having myoclonic, tonic, clonic, clonic, tonic, or atonic sort of seizures. Now, we're talking about the focal seizures, okay, there are different factors like genetics, trauma, syncope, stroke, hypoxia, CNS infection, or metabolic. Now, these all cause imbalance between the excitation and inhibition, and there is hypersynchrony of neuronal circuits. Now, these can precipitate seizures. Now, these seizures can cause even incontinence or bilateral tongue. Now, if the seizures are focal, then it is localized to a specific brain region. So, for example, if it is localized to frontal lobe, okay, then the patient can have loud vocalization. Okay, uh, the, the patient can have bipedal movement, the patient can have fencing posture, which is the lateral abduction of arm. The, the patient can have figure four sign, which is one arm extended and the other arm flexed. The patient can have Jacksonian marks, which starts in hand and moves up to the face. The patient can have eye deviation, okay, okay which uh, can be seen as the localization of frontal, uh, if the seizure is on the frontal eye fields, then the patient may have eye deviation. Now, if the seizures originate from the parietal lobe, then the patient may have subjective sensory symptoms like shock sensation or pins and needle sensation. If the patient is arising, if the seizure is arising from the occipital lobe, then the patient may have visual hallucinations or flashing lights. If the seizure is arising from the temporal lobe, then the patient may have uh, aura, okay, which is the start of seizure and is felt by the patient. Okay, there may be some autonomic features like pallor or flushing. There may be oral or manual automatism like is like lip smacking, and there may be deja vu, uh, fear or dystonic posturing, and uh, this can all precipitate to postictal confusion and postictal nose rubbing. Okay. Now, if there is seizure in the temporal lobe, then the patient, uh, then we have to do the EEG. We can see the temporal spike or sour waves. And uh, in the T2 MRI, we can see hippocampal sclerosis. The T2 MRI showing hippocampal sclerosis is the one thing that is most commonly tested in the USMLA step one examination. So this figure on and all, this flowchart on and all is very, very important. Okay. Just have at least these things in mind and then you can actually localize where the seizure is coming from. Now, talking about the status epilepticus again. Now, status epilepticus is a medical emergency which consists of prolonged seizures, usually more than five minutes, or two or more seizures that occur without a return to baseline consciousness within 30 minutes or continuous clinical and uh, electrographic seizure activity. Common causes include anticonvulsion withdrawal or non compliance, anoxic brain injury. Uh, the diagnosis the treatment and diagnostic workup should be initiated simultaneously. So we treat the patient on, and also we send the samples. We look for CBC, electrolytes, calcium, glucose, ABGs, a liver function test. So everything that you can think of. And then we need to do continuous EEG monitoring. Uh, and if there is intracranial pathology, then we need to obtain a stat head CT. So an LP should be, a lumbar puncture should be procured in the setting of fever or meningeal signs, but only after the CT scan has been obtained to assess the safety of the lumbar puncture. So treating the status epilepticus is very, very difficult. So as any emergency condition, we first check for the airway, breathing, and circulation, and then we administer the patient lorazepam. If there's no improvement, we add the patient with phosphonidine or valproate. 
again if there is no improvement we might have to sedate the patient so we call the anesthesiologist and we sedate the patient by using propofol and again if we uh, do not control then we have to go for medication induced coma for that we can use pentobarbital thank you for watching keep studying hard